Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So for today's kind of sketchbook session, since it is Monday, I have already made a little kind of sketch in my sketchbook for a kind of like simple spread. And the reason being is that I kind of want to practice more inking. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of clip down my sketchbook pages so that they don't really move around. So today I did sketch out Fremenet from Genshin Impact and I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce his name. I don't know a lick of French so uh, I do apologize if I'm going to butcher his name throughout the video. But I thought his character design was just super cute. I always wanted to draw something like this for him ever since the one kind of like, I think the live stream for Fontaine came out. So I really wanted to draw something like this. I might go ahead and do either a marker drawing or a digital version of this at some point, but I kind of wanted to jot this down into my brain at least a little bit. Well, not into my brain, into my sketchbook from my brain because I don't want to forget about this at some point. So today's materials, we are going to be using the Ohuhu fine liners and I'm using the 1.0, the 0.3 and maybe the 0.1. The sketch was done in the pilot color Eno in the color blue this time. And I'm using a kneaded eraser to help lighten up my sketch before we actually start to do any of the line work. I'm just doing this even though like later on, I will be putting back in some of the shadows and stuff with the pilot color Eno pencil in the color blue. I still wanted to erase a little bit of it because I had a lot of stray lines everywhere, but I did try my best to sketch somewhat cleanly and make sure that certain lines were a little bit darker so that when I do erase with the kneaded eraser, not everything's going to be erased completely. So in terms of inking, I personally think that I'm very weak when it comes to inking. I feel like I never really have confidence in my lines or my strokes or just like in general making like somewhat clear and clean line art. But something like this where I feel like the more time and effort you put into adding more details or doing hatching or shading or whatever you want to do with inking, the more lines you add and kind of just break down certain shapes and stuff, I feel like overall seems more like cohesive of a piece. So I decided to kind of pick Fremenet because his outfit one is very cute. I do like his design a lot. And from what I've seen of his character, he seems like a very precious boy. So for me, I also like the fact that his outfit has either like metal or has like a lot of dark areas which I can kind of play with in terms of either hatching, cross hatching, or trying finding different ways to kind of fill in the different kind of values in his outfit or accessories and stuff. So you're gonna see me kind of switch between using the 1.0, which is what I use to fill in more of those heavier dark areas, and the 0.3. 0 0.3 for me is kind of like the most comfortable for me to use. I've always used a 0 0.3 fine liner whenever I did more technical pen drawings in uni or whenever I did like line art for a lot of my drawings at the time. It just felt like a good size that was kind of like not too thin but also wasn't too clunky or too thick to, for my opinion but also it's like it's a good range for me to get thin lines but if I put a little bit more effort I can fill in some areas not too slowly but I definitely like having the 1.0 with me because I can kind of like really chunk in those dark areas and then kind of feather it out with the 0.3 a little bit so it feels a little bit more um, natural of a transition from the 1.0 to the 0.3. So you're going to see, like, kind of see me do this quite a bit throughout the whole drawing. So I did it on his little helmet area. I'm going to do it in his gloves. I think partially like in his hat and a few areas in his actual like outfit and coat will have a lot of black as well. So I'm going to try my best to utilize the fact that I do have a thicker type of marker alongside with this thinner one. So the Ohuhu set actually came with, I think, uh, a bunch of different sizes and a brush tip one, I believe. I gave the brush tip one to my brother because he wanted to use it for something. So I was kind of left with the 1.0 and then the plethora of between, I think, 0.7 to 0.1. So it was still a very good range, but I decided to go with something in the middle and then something on the a lot kind of more thicker end of the nib size, I guess. So in terms of wanting to do this piece 
in color at some point. Like I said, I would either consider doing it in marker and maybe do an ASMR session. Maybe I'll turn it into a draw with me. We'll see what happens uh, depending on how I record it or I can do a digital version because I would love to do one that's more like underwater. Now, I am going to be a little bit nervous if I do tackle this idea in more traditional medium just because the colors of like just stuff in general when it has more of a blue hue might be harder for me to match traditionally which is why I probably feel more comfortable doing it digitally and I would probably be able to execute it a little bit more easily but I've always wanted to do one kind of like more underwater piece with that kind of atmosphere I wanted to do one with either Kokomi or Finana from Niji Sanji En and there's like a few pieces I've done of underwater scenes and stuff just because I also like drawing Wanu underwater as well just because I feel like it fits kind of his demeanor and his image I guess but it's something I would like to do so maybe in a future draw with me or an ASMR video or what have you I will try to do one for Femine and then we can kind of tackle either the color or the hue or kind of creating that atmosphere underwater for his illustration piece that I kind of want to do but uh, a little bit more about the inking. So like I said, his outfit and his helmet and stuff, he has a lot of like darker tones or hues, whatever you want to call it. And I was trying to find different ways for me to emulate the, the shape of, or not the shape, I guess it's like the volume of the form that I was trying to draw alongside with making sure the values look somewhat correct. And I feel like the piece gets a little bit busy. Oh, maybe I should have talked about this in the beginning. Um, the anatomy because I drew this in a weird order like I probably mentioned at the beginning of the video I kind of like blocked in the body very loosely when I first sketched out Fremine but the problem is that when I drew his helmet I kind of drew it like a lot bigger and bigger just to make sure that it felt like appropriate size for his head but instead of drawing his head next and then his body and then the rest of his like you know his torso his hands his legs kind of deal i did the helmet and then i immediately drew the position where his hands were and drew in the hands without giving myself a reference for let's say his body and his face so it kind of threw it off quite a bit because his body will seem a little bit short and his hands are actually big, like very large in terms of like, let's say the size of his face. So I do apologize that it's probably too large and it might look a little bit weird. I was mostly trying my best to find a way for me to pose Remine in a such a like such a manner that I'm able to utilize more hatching and more shading that didn't feel like just a kind of like a front facing pose for him and I feel like this kind of more floaty kind of sinking pose for him kind of fits because he might be underwater I threw in some bubbles and stuff and I kind of wished that I could have planned this out a little bit differently and then have the page on the back of each side to be not drawings that I kind of liked because I would have loved to add either some kind of like monochromatic coloring for him alongside with the black lines which looks kind of like it kind of would have looked cool if I did that and you'll see me kind of attempt to do this at the end where I will add in some of that blue back into certain areas because I even though I like the look of just pure inking I feel like my inking is still weak uh, so I feel like I wanted to supplement some of the areas with some other values by shading it in with pencil which is something I'm more comfortable using uh, because I just I don't know I was a little bit too timid I think and things look a little bit more busy and a little distracting so maybe me just wanting to add color to make me like the piece a little bit more is just like a, a crutch and maybe it's not exactly necessary but I think it would have been kind of fun if I could have added some very light washes of maybe like a muted blue or a muted or not yeah a muted blue or purple and then or like kind of and or a gray if that makes sense with alcohol marker because i could use pretty pastel kind of colors to kind of just accent the piece a little bit even though like black and white still looks very nice i just think maybe i should have added some more areas that just had stark dark color or filled in the background in such a way that makes Remini kind of stand out a little bit more but the 
kind of like other reason why I also did this piece in this kind of manner where he's kind of like splayed out across the spread. I always love when people do kind of like more meticulous drawings or just sketches where sketches kind of break out of those pages where it's like they don't care that there's a seam in the middle. So I do like the fact that people tend to draw over the seam so it's not feel like you drew on one half and then you drew on the other half separately and you kind of box yourself in within the I guess like the confines of the the page space hopefully that makes sense I do like kind of just breaking that and a lot of the times whenever I do spreads immediately I usually place some kind of sketch or drawing right on the kind of like either one towards either side but it's usually a little bit is kind of overlapping over the seam a little bit but I kind of on, went on a tangent, but the reason being is that if you see in the top right hand corner right now, you can see some like little bit of smudging or some kind of like splatter of, I don't know, some marks that are a little bit dark on the page. And the reason being is that I was playing with some of my inks from a previous set alongside with one of my dip pens to see if they were compatible. And I found it a little bit too runny, but I had fun just kind of playing around with ink and just inking. But this paper is so thin that the inking kind of got a little bit, I don't know, a little overboard and it kind of seeps through the page. So there's a little bit of bleed through, there's a lot of ghosting. So I wanted to do something a little bit more bold and a little bit darker, which is why I decided to do a piece like this because I didn't feel like I wanted to do a gouache painting or anything to do like a full cover up of the page just because the the smudging might not seem too apparent for you guys, but for me, it was actually quite apparent on this page. Um, so I did want to do some kind of method of making sure that they don't read too splotchy if I did some other kind of sketch um, on these pages, because that's kind of the reason why I had his face on the right hand side rather than the left hand side because I didn't really want any of the smudging to be there. There's a little bit, um, I believe there's like a tiny mark where it's kind of on his face but luckily he kind of has freckles so it doesn't look too out of place either because it's literally kind of like a comma shape, whoopsies, on his face so it kind of blends in with his freckles just a little bit. Um, in terms of the rest of the inking though, after I did his helmet and his hair and his hat and his hands, I moved down to where his kind of like the end parts of his coat and his shorts and they have a lot of black so a majority of the rest of it's going to be me filling it in with the 1.0 which is the nib that's very thick so it's just easier for me to chunk in the blacks just because I didn't really want to do hatching for the entire thing if not necessary so hmm. I think that's about it in terms of just talking about the inking. I just feel like the more I browse like Pinterest or Twitter or Instagram and I see people's sketches or their sketchbook spreads, the thing I love the most is when people are able to do like uh, either messy inks of drawings or very clean inks. Like I see a lot of people do like, or I guess not people, like a lot of mangakas kind of do a lot of clean ink drawings and they have their I guess like people are posting them on Pinterest but I see them quite a bit I don't know what changed in my algorithm lately but I've seen so many that I just I feel more motivated to just get better at inking so I might even play around with some of the brushes and stuff in Procreate to play around with a little bit more different brushes that I could treat as kind of like anything that might resemble ink or just for me to apply the brush in such a way where it's kind of more black and white and rather than me fiddling around with opacity or making sure that things can be how to explain it like a soft gradient like similar to how in pencil or ballpoint pen you're able to gradually build up value which i'm able to more or less kind of make things look a lot softer because I can have a full range of value that allows me to transition. While with line art or like with pen and fine liners like this, it's pretty much just black and white. So you don't get a lot of tone variations. You're gonna have to uh, focus a lot on doing hatching and kind of playing around with that, like the widths of the lines and the amount of white space so that you can kind of see the shift in value via the amount of white or black that's on the page. Hopefully that's making sense. I'm not sure if it does. Um, 
But the inking is pretty much done, so I'm moving on and filling in some of the areas with a little bit of the blue because I wanted to add a little bit of color back into the piece. Even though I don't think it's like entirely necessary, I'm still gonna put that into the sketch. The remaining footage after this though, after I do a close-up or two, I am going to put the time-lapse version just because the inking section kind of felt a little bit too long and it felt wrong for me to do just the entire thing in time lapse because I do end up like swiveling and spinning my sketchbook quite a bit which might be a little bit too dizzy um, or dizzying kind of feeling for some people so I decided to splice it up into certain sections where you can see me ink in real time but because of that a lot of things were cut out so I'm gonna add in the time lapse version at the end of this so you guys can see kind of like the full process of me inking and I don't know it's just maybe if you're interested in seeing how I inked certain parts you might be able to slow it down and kind of see what I did for that in terms of I don't know different choices of how I decided to do the hatching or if I decided to do cross hatching for certain areas but here's kind of the finished drawing or sketch i don't know you consider this ink drawing uh, from any there's some areas i feel like i missed a little bit i kind of wish i did the fabric in the front of his coat portion a little bit darker because it stands out a little bit too much i might go back in and actually fill that in um, after i finish recording this voiceover so here is the time lapse though so like i said I don't feel super confident doing inking, but I feel like when you finish a full ink kind of like this, and like I said, if you add details or like, you know, things that you enjoy. So for me, I do like hatching and cross hatching quite a bit. And I know I have an idea how to utilize it, not to the best of my ability, but in a certain way. So like, I wanted to make sure that I included the helmet because it gave me some areas to be a little bit more... I don't know, technical in a sense, because there's some shapes that I feel like follow curves and it kind of helps with the hatching and having areas that are a little bit more like metally so that you have kind of harsher shadows of like shinier objects and stuff. I just think it just kind of helps. Um, but also just Fremenet's outfit has a lot of like dark areas and then lighter areas, a lot of metal. So it was kind of fun for me to play around with the different values that I could get with the hatching. I also did like very small little hatching marks for some of the little cross patterns or like the grid pattern in his sleeves and his hood, just because I thought it looks really cute. And it just makes things look a little bit softer since the lines are supposed to be very pale. Now I do apologize that the lighting change happens for some of these clips. It's just that I tried my best to correct it when I was in kind of like the time lapse or not time lapse into the slower clips but for the time lapse i'm not gonna bother to change it just because i don't think it makes too much a difference here um but that's it so that is the finished kind of ink drawing i know the anatomy is very oft his body probably looks very short his hands are too big but for the most part it's just good practice for me to get a little bit more comfortable with inking you can see that's the ink drawing that kind of bled through so i was able to cover a little bit of it and there's no ghosting or real any bleed through with this pen so i can kind of safely use this spread as is and i'll talk to you guys next time in the next video bye